Welcome back to our continuing YouTube video series on business, the law, and the challenges raised by the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. In this particular YouTube video, we're going to be discussing the challenges facing the restaurant industry and other elements of the hospitality industry with respect to their lease agreements for the locations that they operate from. Now, Unfortunately, what tends to happen from a purely legal perspective is that the lease agreements have eliminated the aspect of frustration, which is a common law principle that allows for a party to claim frustration with the courts if it becomes impossible to fulfill their contract. Now, if it wasn't for having a written lease agreement, it may well be possible to claim frustration given the fact that the governments have instituted uh, this preclusion from operating one's own business as in the normal course. Now, the challenge that we find ourselves with is that the lease agreements have circumvented a lot of the common law. And in this particular instance, we will look at what is called the force majeure clause. And the force majeure clause is really designed to give some relief when there are major strikes, acts of war, natural disasters, and the likes. But those terms have a very catchy phrase to them. And that is, in these instances, it may provide relief to the tenant, which is the restaurant owner, the hotel owner, the bar owner, but it does not necessarily provide them relief from their obligation to make the payments that are due under the lease. And it does it in a, oftentimes in a tricky way, if you'll notice. And every lease is particular. It'll oftentimes say the tenant is not relieved of its obligations to make payments of rent, while the landlord is not relieved of making its payments under its own property arrangement. So the landlord has to continue to make its payments. It can still demand payments from the tenant. This creates a tricky situation for the tenant, being the restaurant owner, the hotel owner, the bar owner, the pub owner. And they now find themselves in a very precarious position that they are no longer generating revenue. And without that revenue, they're incapable of making the payments under their lease agreement. And typically those lease payments represent a substantial portion of the revenue costs that go paid out in costs. So they're found, finding themselves in a very, very difficult predicament. So one of the things you're going to be wanting to do as a restaurant owner or someone else in the hospitality industry that has a lease agreement is to review the terms of the lease. Understand what exactly is required in the force majeure clause. There may be loopholes in it. There may be areas of relief. But we can't tell that until you actually review it. And that is a challenge that's faced by everybody. Some clauses are very tight and very strongly worded by the landlord, while others have areas of weakness which can be worked off by the tenant. So that is one aspect. The next aspect is the overall disposition of the landlord. So we have to ask ourselves, how harsh is the landlord going to be with enforcing these provisions when they are potentially going to lose these tenants? And it's not going to be one or two tenants. It's going to be a whole range of tenants because this is not just applied to the restaurant industry and the hospitality industry, which is hard hit, but it's going to apply to a broad scope of businesses that are located with most landlords. That's going to include retail. It's going to include um, personal services, hair cutters, barbers, gro pet groomers, uh, even veterinarians, nail salons. Those kind of businesses are also going to be impacted. So the whole area is going to be impacted. And then we have to ask ourselves, what is the government relief going to be? So we understand some of the aspects of government relief, but they only go so far. 
there's not going to be that much government relief that is going to necessarily make the landlord whole, going to make the tenants whole. And anyways, even if it would, it's going to all come back on the shoulders of the taxpayers. So we got to start figuring out how do we deal with these situations because you can't necessarily break the contract given how the contract is drafted. How are you going to negotiate to move forward? And how are you going to deal with a landlord who's going to be pressed because they are going to have obligations most times unless they own the property outright and are extremely rich that they are going to have obligations to bondholders, banks, other stakeholders, other equity holders that is going to come into play. So it's going to be a time of reviewing your contractual principles and looking for negotiation points and structuring your business going forward. How do you deal with the landlord now? And if the claims are correct, if this becomes a recurrence, how do you position yourself to do, deal with it in the years to come? Given that fact that many people have multi-year lease arrangements, and this might be the first of many, given in some ways we could call it the weakness of the government to fold to this stuff, to serve the public, but also to allow certain things to occur, that how are we going to deal with it going forward? Because if every year or every few years there's these shutdowns of a year or two, it's one thing on right now for the government to say, well, you know what, we're going to give a very specific bailout because it's not planned. But if this recurs, even if it's every second year or third year, how is this going to play out, especially since most lease agreements are of a 10-year variety in certain industries? You're going to be having these major incidences, and it's going to impact stuff. How are you going to negotiate future lease agreements, and how are you going to negotiate your business's survival coming out of this aspect? You have to look at this stuff in detail. You have to get some positive, intelligent, and thoughtful legal advice. And then you have to look at how do you securely negotiate the solution out of this. Because you need to find a way to move forward. The easy way is to shut down and walk away, but then there's every business and that is not what the landlords are going to want to do. They're not going to be in a position to have 20%, 30%, 40% of the restaurant industry and other hospitality interests just shut down and walk away and even potentially look to the government for some type of relief and say, hey, it's not going to work. So you got to figure out how you can move what move forward. You can take advantage of the fact that Everybody's in that type of position, so you might be able to negotiate terms to allow you to move forward. All the time realizing that this bailout that we're receiving is going to have to be recouped in some way by the government. So the costs are going to go up. And as always, costs are pushed back by landlords onto their tenants through additional rent. Lots of stuff to consider. Lots of stuff to talk with the experts about and lots of stuff to move forward and think about now and take action now so that you're at the front of the game, not behind the game when it comes to negotiating to move your business forward. Hopefully this has been providing you some insights as to the challenges that are currently faced and what considerations need to be taken into account as you figure out the way to move forward in keeping your restaurant or other business in the hospitality industry afloat. For more information, please feel free to contact yourselves as this is one of the key areas that we focus on at Newfound Legal. Thank you.